I am back with another installment of my Demonic and Depraved series. This one is about egg gaming. This case study has been sponsored by Kawaii Honey. So thank you, Kawaii, for sponsoring this video. And thank you for keeping me going with these case studies. Really appreciate it. So Kawaii wants to know, what aspects in his chart help shape his mindset to become a sadistic individual? So first, let's read a little bit about Ed Gein. Ed Gein, in full, Edward Theodore Gein, also called the Butcher of Plainfield, born August 27, 1906, La Crosse, Wisconsin, U.S., died July 26, 1984, Madison, Wisconsin, American serial killer whose gruesome crimes gained worldwide notoriety and inspired numerous books and horror films. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre in particular was inspired by this man's story. Gein endured a difficult childhood. His father was an alcoholic and his mother was verbally abusive towards him. Gein nevertheless idolized her, a fact that apparently concerned his elder brother, Henry, who occasionally confronted her in Gein's presence. In 1994, Henry died in mysterious circumstances during a fire near the family's farm in Plainfield. Although Gein reported his brother missing to the police, he was able to lead them directly to the burned body when they arrived. Despite bruises discovered on the victim's head, the death was ruled an accident. The death of Gein's mother in 1945 left him a virtual hermit. In subsequent years, Gein cordoned off the areas of the house that his mother had used most frequently, preserving them as something of a shrine. Gein attracted the attention of the police in 1957 when a hardware store owner named Bernice Warden went missing. Gein had been seen with her shortly before her disappearance and when law enforcement officials visited his farm, they found her body. She had been fatally shot and decapitated. Subsequent examinations of his home showed that he had systematically robbed graves and collected body parts, which he used to make household items, clothing, and masks. Also discovered on the property was the head of Mary Hogan, a tavern operator who had disappeared in 1954. In 1958, Gaines House of Horrors was destroyed by fire, the origins of which remain unclear. All right, so I'll continue reading excerpts from his bio, and I'll also talk about what's in his chart. So as you can see, he has his son in Virgo. He got a Leo stellium consisting of Mars, Mercury, and the North Node. He has Neptune and Jupiter in Cancer, Pluto rising in Gemini, so he's a Gemini uh, rising, Venus in Libra, Moon in Sagittarius, Uranus in Capricorn, Chiron could join to the Aquarius South Node, and Saturn in Pisces. His numerology. So with his birth number of 27, this can produce where he's lacking boundaries in terms of mother and other women. Loss of mother has a major impact. Being isolated by mother, living in a rural area, fantasy and addiction to women takes over. Also, this points to him being a grave robber thief with that two representing graves. That two is representing cancer energy. Seven is representing Neptune energy. Life path number 29 breaks down to 11 and two. You know, I always talk about that 29. So 29 often produces conflicts with the mother, mommy issues, conflicts with women, conflicts with home, high pressure situations that are handled with grace. Now, Dean admitted to killing the two women, both of whom allegedly resembled their mother, but pled not guilty by reason of insanity. In late 1957, he was deemed unfit for trial and was subsequently confined in various psychiatric institutions. In 1968, however, after it was determined that he could participate in his own defense, Gain was put on trial. He was found guilty of killing Warden. 
reportedly due to financial reasons. Prosecutors only tried one murder, but then was deemed insane at the time of the crime. He returned to a mental hospital where he remained until his death in 1984. Gaines' behavior inspired numerous books and movies, notably three of the most influential horror-slash-thriller films ever made, Psycho, directed by Alfred Hitchcock and based on Robert Bloke's powerful 1959 book, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and The Silence of the Lambs. Gaines was born in La Crosse, Wisconsin on August 27, 1906, the second of two boys of George Philip Gaines, and Augusta Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina Gain. Gain had an elder brother, Henry George Gain. Augusta was fervently religious and nominally Lutheran. She preached to her sons about the innate immorality of the world, the evil of drinking, and her belief that all women, apart from herself, were naturally promiscuous and instruments of the devil. She reserved time every afternoon to read to them from the Bible usually selecting verses from the Old Testament and the Book of Revelation concerning death, murder, and divine retribution. She hated her husband, an alcoholic, who was unable to keep a job. He had worked at various times as a carpenter, tanner, and insurance salesman. During his time in La Crosse, George owned a local grocery shop, but he soon sold the business and left the city with his family to live in isolation on a 155-acre farm in the town of Plainfield, Wisconsin, which became the Gain family's permanent residence. Augusta took advantage of the farm's isolation by turning away outsiders who could have influenced her sons. Gain left the farm only to attend school. Outside of school, Gain spent most of his time doing chores on the farm. The cho chores, that's so Virgo. 1930 U.S. Census with Ed Gain, 13th name from the top in Plainfield, Wisconsin, Gain was shy and classmates and teachers remember him as having strange mannerisms, such as seemingly random laughter as if he were laughing at his own personal jokes. That's a Sagittarius moon. To make matters worse, opposing his ascendant and Pluto. To make matters worse, Augusta punished him whenever he tried to make friends. Despite his poor social development, Gain did fairly well in school, particularly in reading. Makes sense with him being a Gemini rising. So here's a picture of Augusta, Ed Gaines' mother. So Ed's moon is at the 19th degree of Sagittarius in the sixth house. That 19th degree pertains to self-expression, also creativity, and also passions. Mother is a pious religious zealot with that Sag moon in the sixth house. Mother is his whole world, which extends to other women. Now that sixth house moon reinforces the Virgo sun, but where he plays God or goes overboard with his crafting and handiwork, represents all the exotic home furnishings he created or crafted with the moon ruling the second house. Preserving the women's body parts. So Sagittarius is the preserver and that moon is representing women. More about his life. So Ed Gaines' father, George, died of heart failure caused by his alcoholism at age 66. Henry and Ed began doing odd jobs around town to help cover living expenses. The brothers were generally considered reliable and honest by residents of the community. While both worked as handymen, Ed also frequently babysat for neighbors. He enjoyed babysitting, seeming to relate more easily to children than adults. The whole babysitting, that's very Virgo as well. Henry began dating a divorced mother of two and planned to move in with her. He worried about his brother's attachment to their mother and often spoke ill of her around Ed, who responded with shock and hurt. On May 16, 1944, Henry and Ed were burning away marsh vegetation on the property. The fire got out of control, drawing the attention of the local fire department. By the end of the day, the fire having been extinguished and the firefighters gone, Ed reported his brother missing. With lanterns and flashlights, a search party searched for Henry, whose dead body was found lying face down. Apparently, he had been dead for some time, and it appeared that the cause of death was heart failure since he had not been burned or injured otherwise. It was later reported by biographer Harold Schechter that Henry had bruises on his head. 
The police dismissed the possibility of foul play and the county coroner later officially listed asphyxiation as the cause of death. The authorities accepted the accident theory, but no official investigation was conducted and an autopsy was not performed. Questioning Ed Gain about the death of Bernice Warden in 1957, state investigator Joe Wimowski brought up questions about Henry's death. George W. Arndt, who studied the case, wrote that in retrospect, it was possible and likely that Henry's death was the Cain and Abel aspect of this case. Gain and his mother were now alone. Augusta had a paralyzing stroke shortly after Henry's death, and Gain devoted himself to taking care of her. Sometime in 1945, Gain later recounted, he and his mother visited a man named Smith, who lived nearby to purchase straw. According to Gain, Augusta witnessed Smith beating a dog. A woman inside the Smith home came outside and yelled for him to stop, but Smith beat the dog to death. Augusta was extremely upset by this scene. However, what bothered her did not appear to be the brutality towards the dog, but rather the presence of the woman. Augusta told Ed that the woman was not married to Smith and so had no business being there and angrily called her Smith's harlot. She had a second stroke soon after and her health deteriorated rapidly. She died on December 29, 1945 at the age of 67. Ed was devastated by her death. In the words of Arthur Harold Schechter, he had lost his only friend and one true love. His only friend, that's that Aquarius midheaven. And he was absolutely alone in the world. So he has Aquarius on the midheaven that's dealing with his mom. And that points to his mom being his friend. Especially because he has Venus trying that Aquarius midheaven. So his moon is opposing his ascendant and Pluto in Gemini. And this is representing his mother who was constantly feeding his mind with religious teachings, reading the Bible all the time, especially the gloom and doom part of the Bible, Revelations in particular. Her death left a major void in his life. He could have became a voyeur due to his mother's influence. So, you know, he knows he can't have relations with women, so he could just become a voyeur as a result, being made to feel that he was dirty, nasty, and God-forsaken, kill brother in order to have mom all to himself or to vindicate mom, basically, because his brother was talking trash about mom quite a bit. Gain held on to the farm and earned money from odd jobs. The odd jobs, that's very Virgo. He boarded up rooms used by his mother, including the upstairs, downstairs parlor and living room, leaving them untouched. While the rest of the house became in increasingly squalid, these rooms remained pristine. Gain lived thereafter in a small room next to the kitchen. Around this time, he became interested in reading pulp magazines and adventure stories, particularly those involving cannibals or Nazi atrocities, specifically from Ilse Kopp. Gain was a handyman and received a farm subsidy from the federal government starting in 1951. He occasionally worked for the local municipal road crew and crop threshing crews in the area. Sometime between 1946 and 1956, he also sold an 80-acre parcel of land that his brother Henry had owned. So he had Moon, Tri, Mercury, and Mars in Leo. And this is where he was channeling his creative talent and ideas into preserving parts of women's bodies for his collection and home decor with the moon ruling the second house. Also, his ability to come across as a nice guy. Moon, sextal Venus in Libra. Uh, that Venus is intercepted in the fifth house. Basically, with this sextal, he's free to do what he wants with the women's bodies. Gets lucky in the trial, so he was found not guilty by reason of insanity. On the morning of November 16, 1957, Plainfield hardware store owner Bernice Warden disappeared. A Plainfield resident reported that the hardware store's truck had been driven out from the rear of the building at around 9.30 a.m. The hardware store saw few customers the entire day. 
Some area residents believe that this was because of deer hunting season. Bernice Warden's son, Deputy Sheriff Frank Warden, entered the store around 5 p.m. to find the store's cash register open and bloodstains on the floor. Frank Warden told investigators that on the evening before his mother's disappearance, Gain had been in the store and that he was to have returned the next morning for a gallon of antifreeze. A cell slip for a gallon of antifreeze was the last receipt written by Warden on the morning that she disappeared. On the evening of the same day, Gain was arrested at a West Plainfield grocery store and the Washara County Sheriff's Department searched the Gain farm. A Washara County Sheriff's deputy discovered Warden's decapitated body in a shed on Gain's property, hung upside down by her legs with a crossbar at her ankles and ropes at her wrists. The torso was stressed out like a deer. She had been shot with a 22 caliber rifle and the mutilations were made after her death. So here's an image of some of the craft work that he created out of the bodies of women. So that sun in Virgo in the fourth is opposing Saturn and Pisces in the 10th. Life is lived in isolation. Rationality gives way to insanity. Obeying the commands of a satanic slash demonic spirit with Saturn ruling the eighth, strong compulsions could be viewed as demonic influence stemming from mother. Mom was his personal demon in the flesh, basically. Having to operate in secret. A Dr. Evil aspect. In the form of taking the skins, which is represented by Saturn, from dead women and creating works of art, which is Pisces. Home being decorated with bone and skin artwork. Now, Virgo is a very crafty sign. And Virgo can be very much about taking things apart and putting them back together and constructing things and all that stuff. And, you know, I talk about Virgo being a very meddlesome sign. So that's basically what he was doing. He was meddling with these women's bodies and creating these works of art. Stealing from the graveyard with that fourth house representing the grave, basically him being a grave robber with Saturn ruling the eighth house, being confined to a mental institution, father being a major drunk, living in a bottle syndrome. And this living in a bottle syndrome was projected onto his victims, like in this picture right here with that face encased in that glass bottle or container. So his south node was conjoined to Chiron in Aquarius in the ninth house. So this is the underlying issue for his problems, for being such an oddball, strange individual. Being subjected to religious extremism with the knife house representing religion. Very susceptible to the superconscious realm. That ninth house is also the superconscious realm. Can produce intrusive thoughts with Chiron, extreme perversions, and deviant behavior. Alienation. Sometimes you need to take this literally as in being totally sociopathic, devoid of emotion, lack of empathy. And this is stemming from his mother keeping him from contact with the outside world. Mad scientists, crazy inventor energy, experimentation. So his south node in Chiron and Aquarius forming a sesqui square with Pluto and Ascendant and Gemini. So this is part of the reason why like he had a mindset of a killer and where it was sick and twisted. Produces extreme and shocking sexual perversions. His sick and twisted inventions could have lusted over his mother. She may have allowed to see her naked despite being a religious woman. Um, there were times when I think she bathed him as an adult and, um, they reported that there was times where he did sleep in bed with her when he was taking care of her, like when after she had a stroke. Compulsive actions due to intrusive thoughts. Feeling nothing regarding the death of his brother. So 
So 10 skulls found in the house of horror. I read somewhere it was 12 and his Saturn is at the 12th degree. So searching the house, authorities found whole human bones and fragments, a wastebasket made of human skin, human skin covering several chair seats, skulls and his bedposts, female skulls, some with the top sawn off, bowls made from human skulls, a corset made from a female torso, skin from shoulders to waist, leggings made from human leg skin, mask made from the skin of female heads, Mary Hogan's face mask in a paper bag, Mary Hogan's skull in a box, Bernice Warden's entire head in a burlap sack, Bernice Warden's heart in a plastic bag in front of Gaines' pot belly stove. Nine vulvae in a shoe box. If you don't know what vulvae is, it's basically the lips of a woman's vagina, the outside. Lord Jesus. A young girl's dress and the vulvas of two females judged to have been about 15 years old. A belt made from female human nipples, four noses, a pair of lips on a window shade drawstring, a lampshade made from the skin of a human face, fingernails from female fingers. Wow. So he stayed busy basically taking apart these bodies and refashioning them into household items. And that sun opposition Saturn is the main aspect dealing with his handiwork. You could say handiwork is very Virgo. And again, remember, Saturn's ruling that eighth house. So this is him meddling with the dead and turning it into art. Look how sinister he looks right there. So his sun in Virgo forming a semi-square with Venus and Libra. I call this the incel aspect. Like, he's totally inept when dealing with women, but just dealing with people in general. Uh, very insecure around women. Socially inept, reclusive tendencies with the sun in the fourth and Venus ruling the 12th house. Not allowing people into his home due to the condition of it and evidence with Venus ruling the 12th via Taurus. Brother gets in the way of his relationship with his mother. Son rules the third house. And remember, he has Venus trying me in heaven. So you could look at this aspect as his brother being a constant irritant. And he finally did something about it. Gain admitted to stealing from nine graves from local cemeteries and led investigators to their locations. Alan Wilamoski of the State Crime Laboratory participated in opening three test graves identified by game. The caskets were inside wooden boxes. The top boards ran crossways, not lengthwise. The tops of the boxes were about two feet below the surface of sandy soil. Gain had robbed the graves soon after the funerals while the graves were not completed. The test graves were exhumed because authorities were uncertain as to whether the slight game was capable of single-handedly digging up a grave during a single evening. They were found as game described. Two of the exhumed graves were found empty. One had a crowbar in place of the body. One casket was empty. One casket game had failed to open when he lost his pry bar. And most of the body was gone from the third grave. Yet game had returned rings and some body parts. Thus, Gaines' confession was largely corroborated. Soon after his mother's death, Gaines began to create a woman's suit so that he could become his mother, to literally crawl into her skin. Gaines denied having sex with the bodies he exhumed, explaining they smelled too bad. So him trying to become his mother, that's very much sun opposition. Saturn with Saturn in the 10th house, 10th house being his mom, but also moon opposition, Pluto, and ascendant, especially that moon opposition, Pluto. Now, during state crime laboratory interrogation, Gain had also admitted to shooting Mary Hogan, a tavern owner missing since 1954, whose head was found in his house. 
but he later denied memory of details of her death. Now, his self-known in Chiron were forming a quincunx with Neptune in Cancer. So this is where he couldn't handle being separated from mom after she died, so he did something about it. Because the quincunx can deal with where you make adjustments. Also, this points to his extreme objectification of women with the Aquarius energy representing objectification. Extremely awkward around women and that's due to his mother's influence, wearing some of the items he fashioned from women's body parts. He has Neptune in the second house, which is him basically creating clothing and other items out of the bodies of women. Jupiter in Cancer, Quincunx, Chiron, and Aquarius. Obje objectification of women, again, inventing items using women's body parts, wearing some of the items he made, with Jupiter being in the first house. Now his Venus in Libra forming a square with Neptune in Cancer. Basically, he was so immersed in his mother's life, represented by Neptune in Cancer, that he cannot form healthy relationships with women. Mother isolated him from people. Mother caused him to fear women so he could only deal with them in an unconscious state or deal with them at, you know, after they had died. Not viewing people, especially women, as real or separate individuals. Women become mythical doll-like creatures because of the Neptune influence. Hence his ability to fashion items from their body parts. And again, with Neptune being in the second house, that's him possessing these women and turning their bodies into possessions, items. Also, this Venus square Neptune can cause him to live in a fishbowl existence where, like, he only exists in his own twisted world, the world that his mother created, hence that Neptune and Cancer. So basically, he just did not relate to people in general, and that enabled him to do what he did because he didn't look at people as human. Yeah, this is one sick pup. A 16-year-old youth whose parents were friends of Gain and who attended ball games and movies with him reported that Gain kept shrunken heads in his house, which Gain had described as relics from the Philippines sent by a cousin who had served on the islands during World War II. Upon investigation by police, these were determined to be human facial skins carefully peeled from corpses and used by Gain as masks. Gain was also considered a suspect in several other unsolved cases in Wisconsin, including the 1953 disappearance of Evelyn Hartley, a lacrosse babysitter. During questioning, Washara County Sheriff Art Shuley reportedly assaulted Gain by banging his head and face into a brick wall. As a result, Gain's initial confession was ruled inadmissible. Shelley Shelley died of heart failure at age 43 in 1968 before Gaines' trial. Many who knew Shelley, of Skelly Shelley, I, I don't know how that's pronounced, said he was traumatized. These, geez, these last names. Said he was traumatized by the horror of Gaines' crimes, Gaines' crimes, and this alone with the fear of having to testify, especially about assaulting Gaines caused his death. One of his friends said he was a victim of Ed Gain as surely as he had butchered him. So just having Pluto on the ascendant like that, that's basically him being classified as a murder. I mean, a murderer, a monster, a serial killer, um, just somebody that is dark and depraved. And with that Pluto opposing the moon, you know, I talk about oppositions being dark corridors. This is the dark corridor that he was trapped in due to his mother's religious influence, but also that sun opposition Saturn produces a dark corridor as well.
So he had Sun, Tron, Uranus, and Capricorn in the seventh. Ability to fashion items out of bones. At liberty to live out his dark perversions. Working as a handyman for people developed a good reputation and word of mouth with Uranus in the seventh. Sun sextile Jupiter in Cancer. Ability to extract women from graves. Ability to meddle with women frequently frequenting the graveyard with sun in the fourth, rule in the third house. Living in a rural area enable him to work as he please. On November 21st, 1957, Gain was arraigned on one count of first degree murder in Washara County Court, where he pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Gain was diagnosed with schizophrenia and found mentally incompetent, thus unfit for trial. That sun opposition Saturn is very much a schizophrenic aspect um, because Saturn's in Pisces. He was sent to the Central State Hospital for the criminally insane, now the Dodge Correctional Institution, a maximum security facility in Wapum, Wisconsin and later transferred to the Mendota State Hospital in Madison, Wisconsin. So he had a kite in his chart, and this kite enabled him to escape uh, capital punishment. He was able to get away with his crimes, basically, because he was sentenced to a mental institution instead of prison. So kites are aspect patterns that can deal with things working out in your favor to a large degree. Now, in the kite, there is a grand trine, and I often talk about how you can find grand trines in the charts of serial killers and other depraved individuals who are able to get away with their crimes for quite a while. So that grand trine consists of his midheaven, Venus, and ascendant, Air Grand Trine, and then the kite is including Mars and also that Ascendant and Pluto. Jupiter in Cancer opposition Uranus in Capricorn, being so attached to Mother that he can't relate to anyone else because Uranus is ruling that 10th house. So this is another dark corridor. And when Uranus ruling that 10th house, it's like he was trapped in the world of his mother and couldn't find his way out. So when she died, all he still knew was the life with his mother. So this opposition kicked into high gear where he started to basically try to become his mother or recreate his mother. This is some sick, twisted shit right here. Mother alienates him from social contact. She becomes his only partner with Jupiter ruling the seventh house. So it's like he's seriously trapped in this sick and twisted religious world with his mother because Jupiter rules the seventh house. Uranus is ruling the tenth house. So... There's no outlet that he had when dealing with his mother. It's very plain to see with this opposition. Another dark corridor. Stuck in a dark corridor of perverted views of women, which stems from his mother's religious influence. So here's that dark corridor right here. Opposition. It says obsessive love for his mother drove Gain to slay Rob Graves. So he has North Node conjoined a Mercury and Leo in the third house. Being in competition with brother, with the brother ruling that third house. Also, Mercury rules brothers as well. And remember, he's a Gemini rising with Pluto rising. That's the death of his brother right there. That basically shows that he was responsible. Father left a lasting impression upon his mind. So seeing his father drunk all the time, his father would never do well um, with that son in Virgo, opposition Saturn, father always being out of work. And that basically gave mom all the power, basically, and authority. So again, he didn't even have respite through his father. He didn't even have balance in that respect. 
also this can manifest as the mind of a child like a man child aspect and people did say that a game did seem like he had his growth was stunted like mentally and like he was like arrested in terms of his development and it makes sense with his mom basically isolating him from the world creative mindset but takes it too far or becomes perverted with opposition to chiron and south node in aquarius mercury and north node quincunx saturn and pisces this is another one that really impacted his mindset that prompted him to start engaging in these depraved acts so mom forbids him from having romantic or sexual thoughts with saturn in the 10th results in a complex looking up women's skirts aspects. So this could be viewed as, you know, one of those creeper, peeper, peeping Tom, or one of those voyeur type of people that, you know, will try to sneak and look up women's skirts or drill a hole in a bathroom and look through the peephole and try to catch people in compromising positions. Peeping Tom aspect, like I said, mom isolates Ed and his brother from peers she stayed on top of them. So this is where it's like she doesn't let, she doesn't give them any slack, basically. Also, she could have bathed and or slept with him well into his teenage years. I wouldn't be surprised if that was taking place as well. Because with Saturn being in the uh, 10th house, this is like she's not allowing him and his brother to grow up and be men and be independent. Mars, it, oh, also, with the sun ruling that third house and being in the fourth, that means that his mind is totally subjective. Um, but yeah, that sun in the fourth ruling the third, that makes his mind totally subjective and he's internalizing everything. He has no objectivity whatsoever. Even though he has Venus and Libra, it's square in that Neptune. So his Mars and Leo was forming a semi-square with Jupiter and Cancer. And this contributed to his screwed up mindset as well with Mars being in that third house. So mother's religious beliefs inhibits his self-expression. Lack of individuation from mother. Overbearing mother, especially with Jupiter being in his first house got so used to living to please his mother that he could not stand to be without her. Could have been haunted by mother, which would explain why he dug up her grave and decapitated her, according to one story. But then there's another story that's saying that he tried to dig up his mother, but he couldn't because the graveyard dirt in that particular graveyard was like sandy or whatever, and he couldn't dig it up. So there's conflicting stories about this, but this could be basically where he's being haunted by his mother and it's driving him crazy. Explains why he chose women to kill that resemble his mother with Jupiter ruling the seventh house. So again, the fact that Jupiter rules the seventh house is showing that his whole life existed in the twisted world that was created by his mother. Lacking ability to form healthy connections with others due to mother's overwhelming presence with Jupiter ruling the seventh house. So again, with this Mars semi-square Jupiter, his mindset is totally subjective and he couldn't think independently that Mars being in the third house because of his mother's overbearing influence. Mars and Leo, Sesquy Square, Uranus and Capricorn. Now this aspect really caused him to be mentally unhinged. Mother forbidding him from loving or having sex with anyone. Developing sexual attraction to mother with Uranus ruling the 10th house. Developing extreme sexual perversions as a result of mother's influence. Projecting perverted relationship he had with mother onto other women who resemble her with Uranus in the 7th ruling the 10th house. Desiring the skin and bones, in particular with Capricorn influence. He became sexually aroused when he saw his mother disembowel a pig. So one time he told, I think he told one of the uh, detectives that 
he got sexually turned on by seeing his mother gut a pig. Now that Mars is ruling the sixth house via Scorpio. So that Scorpio on the sixth can deal with where you are coming into contact with some gruesome things just on an everyday basis. Shocking, appalling, and perverse behavior directed towards others or the opposite sex with Uranus in the seventh. And this Mars sesquicentric square Uranus can basically just produce a depraved mindset. So here are some asteroids and fixed stars, and they're very telling. So Pluto contra parallel Arachne, caught up in a web of obsession that leads to murder. Midheaven conjunct Astraea. Mother goes too far with her alienation tactics, bullying, and perversions. Ed goes too far with his attachment to mother. North no parallel Bacchus. Father's alcoholism had a serious effect upon his mind. Neptune conjunct to Siphony. Facing harsh judgment and punishment. Mainly harsh judgment because his punishment, I, he got off pretty easy. South Node conjunct chaos. Basically a dark primordial void, which is what chaos represents. Mother is the source of chaos with the South Node influence. So this is what I uh, got from this uh, website talking about chaos, the mythology. But it was more than just a gaping void, as its name is usually translated from ancient Greek. Personify as a female, chaos was the primal feature of the universe, a shadowy realm of mass and energy, which much of what is powerful and mostly negative and dark in the world would stem forth in later genealogies. So basically, we're dealing with some real dark energy he was in touch with. Ascendant conjunct Circe. This one is very telling. So Circe is dealing with the mythology where this woman was tricking men and she would transform them into animals. So this points to his ability to fashion something into another form, capable of turning human beings into animals or viewing humans as animals. Remember, he basically was dehumanizing people due to his mother's influence. Mother... I'm sorry, moon contra parallel Circe, viewing women as animals, gutting them like animals. Remember, he first became aroused when he saw his mother gutting a pig. So he might have likened women to nothing but pigs. Chiron is south node conjunct Hygieia. Past life as a doctor, evil character, perhaps. Mercury contra parallel Orpheus. Repeated visits to graveyard, being in great mourning over mother, 29th degree, so he goes to hell with her. Because Orpheus basically deals with going down to Hades, which is another name for hell. Saturn, parallel prosopina, kidnapping dead women's bodies, abandonment issues over mother. Mars, parallel Apollo. This is representing that cop that was banging Ed's head against the brick wall during the investigation. When I saw this, I was like, get a load of this. Because Apollo is an asteroid that could deal with where you are hitting your head against a brick wall. But it's in the figurative sense. But sometimes you could take these asteroids literally. So that's what happened. So the cop was banging Ed's head against a brick wall. And I really don't blame the cop. But also this points to Ed's repeated offenses because Apollo could deal with where you're doing something over and over again and not learning from your mistakes. Mars conjunct Shiva, assuming the role of the destroyer, witnessing his father destroy things, perhaps destroying his brother. With this conjunction being in the third house, Mars conjunct Selene, strong desire for women, the feminine essence, creating items using the parts of women. Venus con conjunct Salacia, being known for his salacious deeds on women, becoming famous for salacious details. His story drew people to town up to the town of Plainfield from all over. So, you know, people love a salacious story. So that points to that. 
ascending parallel Urania, believing that his mother is still talking to him from the graves, because Urania could deal with specialized knowledge and information, gaining specialized knowledge of women on a visceral level and in, in the literal sense. Mercury parallel prima hiatum. That's a star that can manifest as scandal, violence, disgrace, imprisonment. Venus parallel Rizel, technical and artistic ability, which he had. Inventiveness, which that applies to him. Humor, they said that he liked to tell jokes. Honors, riches, happiness. Venus conjunct Mufrid, prosperity from work, planning, strong desires, a tendency towards excess, a fondness for rural pursuits, occultism. Mars conjunct own worst enemy. Now, this isn't a star, but it's a degree, the 22nd degree of Leo that is representing your own worst enemy or where you could be your own worst enemy. It's an unfortunate degree. And it basically means that the person has no freedom to act on their own behalf. So this conjunction right here brings to mind the topic of free will. Because I've been uh, watching some videos lately of like some philosophers and neuroscientists, physicists that are basically saying we have no free will. I might actually do a separate video about this, but I kind of subscribe to that belief system because when you take astrology into account, it kind you have to kind of admit that if we do have free will, it's very limited. But I will say, even if that's the case, I do feel like we are responsible for our actions. But some of these proponents of the theory that there is no free will basically is saying, well, that absolves everybody from wrongdoing. And I don't agree with that. Jupiter parallel Hamal. Hamal is a fixed star that can manifest as violence, cruelty, brutality. Jupiter conjunct Merzam. This can manifest as good qualities, which he did have a few good qualities, according to neighbors and people in the town, charitable, faithful, but also dangerous passions. And that's directed towards women because Jupiter is in Cancer. Saturn parallels Zubin El Shamali. While this produces wealth and distinction and a brilliant mind, it also pertains to politics, war, religion, writing, tragedy, violence, melancholy. Now, he wasn't a rich man, but he did do pretty well in terms of the land that he had. Neptune parallel was sought. This can manifest as chemicals, which I'm sure he used when it came to like creating these works of art using dead bodies, poisons, gas, violence, malevolence, destructiveness as a first principle, pessimism, clear authoritative speech, prominence in public affairs, he became prominent for the worst reason. Neptune could join the Sirius. Sirius manifests as ambition, pride, emotionality, fame, leadership, wealth, fires. So this is pointed to the fire at the farm, especially with Neptune being in cancer. Drought, danger through impetuosity. Pluto could join to Alheca, power, greed, aggression. Ascendant conjunct fact. Talent in art and science, which he basically had. He just channeled it into some depraved activities. Ascendant conjunct Bellatrix. Loquaciousness, accident, sudden dishonor. Ascendant conjoined to El Nap. Luck, fortune, success, quarrels. Being headstrong, weapons of war, point of attack. Ascendant conjunct Analam. Brief fame, quick temper, scandal. Ascendant conjunct Mintaka. High position, studious, sharp mind, good memory, good fortune. Midheaven con conjuncts Sador. This is part of the Christian cross. So this represents his mother being a religious extremist with the midheaven representing his mother. Words of command, gathering of wealth, a hidden God, the arts, communication with birds. Ascendant conjunct Arabic part of danger or peril. Represents the danger his brother faced as a result of him bad mouthing their mother. Men have an opposition Arabic part of marriage. This is very telling, essentially being married to his own mother. Neptune opposition Arabic part of private enemies. That boy who told on him after seeing the heads in his home. Pluto opposition Arabic part of honorable acquaintance. He may have met someone high up in government, perhaps politician. 
So that concludes this case study on Ed Gain. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you think that he was totally out of his mind when he did these things and that he, he uh, his sentence of being committed to a mental uh, hospital was justified? Or do you believe that he should have been found guilty and been sent to the chair or sent to a uh, life in prison? Um, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you would like to sponsor a case study or a video of anybody, you can send me an email. I'll put my email in the description section. If you would like a reading, you could go to my website. The link is in the description section as well. Thanks again, Kawaii Honey, for sponsoring another video. Peace.